Hey, good evening everybody. Sarah again here from Pleasant View back out in the goat barn tonight. And uh, Andy and I were talking about something that came up recently that we thought we would uh, do a video on, uh, as all our videos seem to be that way recently. And so um, we had the unfortunate situation, if you recall back in one of my videos about how to milk a goat, we talked about briefly the um, symptoms around the topic of mastitis, which is, I believe, an infection in the udder. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I grew up on a dairy farm and, you know, it can happen to cows. So I'm easing back into it, what, 30 years later uh, or so, getting back in with goats now with my husband, Andy. And um, I'm still learning everything, of course, about how it affects goats and, and things like that and what mastitis truly is and other afflictions that affect lactating animals. But anyway, um, I believe it's infection in their udder. And so we had the unfortunate situation here where one of our goats actually came down with it. And so um, we kind of reached out to some friends who are great resources and our gurus when it comes to dealing with goats and how to treat them uh, with any of their issues that come up because they are pretty hardy, but at the same time, they are quite fragile. And so Andy and I are gonna touch base here, hopefully in a little quick video. Um, should you have uh, a goat and uh, you run across yourself having the symptoms of mastitis, how to test for it and also how to treat it. So Andy's here with me tonight, of course. Hi. And we've done the milking now, all the girls are done, including Bella, unfortunately our Bella in blue. Um, she uh, is the one that came down with mastitis here. And so I'm gonna turn it over here to Andy. He's gonna show how you can test for it um, using a very simple kit from our friend Jack. So go well, ahead, Andy. First, I'd like to say that there is two broad categories of mastitis. One is clinical mastitis, which is more severe, and that's when the goat is quite sick and they tend to have um, a, a warm hard udder and um, the milk is you can tell something's wrong with the milk and then there's subclinical mastitis which is less severe and it's going to be you can't tell really that anything's wrong with the milk but there is an infection in the udder um, and so um, what we got this um, tester from it's called the California um, mastitis test and it's pretty easy to do and what um, we do is you squirt the milk in this little paddle and then put a, a re reagent in there to react with the milk and if it is abnormal the milk will turn into like a jello and if it's um, normal then the milk will stay liquid so um, I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So this is the side that was affected. And so just to reiterate, we talked to our friends uh, Bob and Darlene Taylor uh, up here in Michigan and uh, um, some other uh, good resources, our friends Jack, and um, we had talked to them about mastitis and treating it and things like that. And um, Andy's gonna have to get by me here to get the medicine or get the test kit. and. Um, they just wanted to reiterate to us that if you suspect mastitis, when you touch the udder, it's going to feel hard, uh, more than likely. It's also going to feel hot and uh, inflamed, hot to the touch. And so the goat may also, who normally doesn't kick or doesn't react, she might be very calm. She will also start dancing around or even possibly kick because of course it is sensitive to her. Um, another thing is that uh, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had heard that treating it subcutaneously with antibiotics, that is not going to help, correct? No, um, there won't be enough of the medicine in the, in the milk to really clear up the infection. Okay, so again, uh, a subcutaneous uh, injection of antibiotics in the case of mastitis will not help uh, the case. You have to get another product, it, and we'll show that it shortly. Might help. Oh, it it's going to help. help. Okay. It might help, but it probably won't completely cure it. Clear it up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if you can see the difference. Okay. I'm going to turn the camera around here. Hopefully you can see it. You can just hold it straight, Andy. Okay. So this is the abnormal one. Um, it's not... No, she's already had one treatment, so it's better than it was this morning. But it was almost solid this morning, and it's... But you can see the difference in the... This one is a lot more fluid. I hope I'm getting it out of camera one. here. It should okay. be. So, Andy, can I ask a question? Why mm. is one darker than the other? I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. Okay. But the reason... I don't know. I haven't done this enough to know if that's... 
a hallmark of it being abnormal, or okay. if that just happens to be with it this time. I'm but, not sure. But we can see, um, you know, it's not one color. We can see there's some sort of there's globs clotting there. and globs, yeah. So we know that she still has mastitis in that one side. And now, just to refresh your memory, goats have two teats on their udders. They have two chambers for their milk. Um, I'm going to flip it around here back by Bella again. And so, it's okay. It's okay. As you can see here, here's one section. And then, of course, here's the, the other section. Okay, so again, when you are milking uh, and there's mastitis going on, her, her udder is quite firm even after milking. And I know when I milked her, um, you will feel clots come down the teat. It's, it's kind of a, I'll be honest, it's kind of a weird feeling. And um, that kind of triggered things off. And so we thought, you know what, we're going we're gonna to talk to our friends. We're going to find out more information. And we'll probably have to test her. And sure enough, long story short, uh, out came mastitis. So, um, and now are we going to move on to the, yeah, I can, okay. If you want, I can hold the phone in your foot and you can put it in. Okay. So let me, I'll introduce. Okay. So our friends again, Bob and Darlene told us about two products. So to treat mastitis in the udder itself, um, you have to inject up into the teat, this solution. So the product we got was from our local tractor supply. This one is called Today. There is one made by the same brand that's called Tomorrow, and you need to know the difference because the Today version is going to be, excuse me, if you have goats that you wish to keep milking. They're lactating and you don't wish to dry them up. If, uh, if they are drying up, then you would get the Tomorrow version. So again, today would be for lactating to continue. Tomorrow would be for lactating to stop. And so um, I've taken the cap off here. It's got a very thin little syringe top. Barb and Darlene assured us that it doesn't hurt her to, uh, to put this up into the teat. And we did an application this morning per the instructions. It only takes two doses within 12 hours, if my memory serves me right. And um, it says, by the way, it says for cows, um, Bob and Darlene confirmed that, um, and she seems to be doing fine too, um, there's really nothing out there specifically for goats in this case. Um, obviously, goats are still quite new on the whole dairy industry, the goat milk line, and um, everything may say for, for lactating cows or for drying up cows only. Rest assured, you can give this to your goats, and it's, it is okay. So um, Andy's going to take the phone from me here, and I'm going to show how we inject this into her teat. We so, already washed her. So. Okay, yes. So we have already cleansed her, her uh, udder here and her teat. Um, there should be also a wipe. Uh, we did that before the camera got rolling. Um, there's a, a sanitizing wipe that you can use as well. So we're not hurting her, okay? We're not hurting her here. We just simply have to inject the teat. Takes a moment to find the hole. And I try to be quick about it, but I want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly too. So I have it up. It's okay. It's okay, Bella. I wasn't ready there. So I have it up into the teat, and I'm going to squeeze the bottom putting the medication up into her, up into her chamber, all is compressed and withdraw and let her go. So probably took maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds at the most. Um, obviously when you don't have a camera rolling and uh, you're not trying to explain it, you can do it much more quickly yourself. So again, the dosage on the, on the box for today, it said um, to do two doses within 12 hours. And, and so, in theory, drink the milk from the other side. Oh, okay, yes, and yes. Withholding milk. Yes. So when you have a goat that has mastitis, um, you can certainly drink the milk that is on the other chamber that is clean. Um, so typically, they only get it in one side, or I'm not. I mean, they could get it in both sides. But um, if you find out when you do your test that it's only appearing in one side, rest assured if that milk is really important to you from the clean chamber, from the side that doesn't test positive for mastitis, you can consume it. You can use it. And then uh, for the side that has mastitis confirmed and you do the applications of the today or tomorrow, now I'm just speaking about the today medicine that we gave, but the box said that you had to wait 96 hours before you can put that milk in for consumption. So Andy and I gave her one injection up the teat this morning. We've now waited 12 hours and we're giving her the second dose per the box. And um, 
now we know that we have to wait our 96 hours. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to wait and not put that milk in for consumption until Friday morning at the earliest. We might even wait till Friday evening. We have enough goats here that we're not really dependent upon it at the moment. So um, again, if one side only is showing mastitis because the chamber is split, uh, the milk is not in one in the bag and it's you know coming out the two teats, it's actually two separate chambers. And so um, if you only have it on one side, don't consume that side, throw it away. Uh, the second side that is clean, you can certainly keep consuming as normal. Good point, Andy. So we're just, uh, Andy had milked her on the clean side. And uh, can you say hi? Goats actually love the uh, love milk. They they love the taste, even if it's even if it's from themselves. But uh, the problem lies in that uh, a goat can actually reach its udder, <laughs> and so um, once they kind of figure out that they've got a, if you will, a, a milk stand <laughs> on their backside. Um, it's kind of extremely difficult to make them stop and that's a whole nother ball of wax and a whole nother problem. But um, you got to be careful because if they realize that that's where, that they're their own store, um, uh, <laughs> now you got a problem. So, but they, they love milk and uh, there's just a little bit left in there. So that was the clean milk and obviously you can give it back to the goat. So that was it for this evening. Uh, thanks for sticking around with us here as we walked through this uh, experience with mastitis and how to administer some medications for the goat and hopefully clear it up. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and comment on the post or send us a private message to Pleasant View Orchard and Bakery. We'll be happy to answer your questions or uh, direct, you know, uh, put your mind at ease for any concerns. So um, hopefully you found that helpful. If you've got goats of your own and you're, you're you know, unfortunately dealing with that kind of situation or if you're just a city folk and you wanted to just see something really really exciting right how to how to stick something up a goat's udder sorry for being crude but uh it didn't hurt her she's perfectly fine and uh we're very we're very rest assured that she'll be she'll be just fine again very soon so everybody have a pleasant evening and uh we will be back on the channel again soon of course take care bye bye